Raptors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Mike in Southern California. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Tom, nice to talk to you again. And I have to start out and first tell you, I love this trading room. This thing is great. This app, it works great. And uh, getting all the information, it, you're like instantly there. No delay, nothing. That's I know. Great. I Listen, Thank I you appreciate again. your growling problem with us. Your channel is in my pocket all day long. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, man. You Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob filling in for Tom O'Brien. Our number is 877-927-6648. If you want to send me an email, you can do that at jacob at tfnn.com. Let's see what we got on the cards today. Uh, this says, whatever people do, feel, think, or say, don't take it personally. Others are going to have their own opinion according to their belief system. So whatever they think about you is not about you, but is about them. Okay, today we have all the indices up. It's actually a, a good day. The Dow Jones Industrial is up 1.48. The NASDAQ is up 2.13, which is breaking a, a very long-term uh, downtrend. Uh, we have the SPX up 1.82%. Um, regarding some of the other indices, we have the Qs up 2.17, the GDX up 3.73, um, and we actually have the dollar, where we got, dollars down um, almost 1%. So this is pretty interesting. Um, let's, let's kind of focus around the dollar, right? I think we had a little bit of a pop recently. It reached up to 110, which is pretty huge. That brought a lot of, of down pressure in the market in general. What I think this is, is the uh, market itself kind of pricing in uh, what they believe the uh, interest rate increase will be in September. I think the market believes that we're going to have about a 75 basis point increase. Um, and that's getting extended into November meeting, which will be uh, what the market thinks about 50 basis points. Um, and there's no real consensus for December. Um, so we've priced in September. We might see a bounce in the dollar over the next month um, as they're pricing in November as we get closer to that. And as I said, December is still up in the air. However, uh, Powell has come out and said that there is a need uh, to go beyond the neutral rate, right, uh, to create kind of a contraction within the market. Additionally, the ECB raised their interest rate by uh, 75 basis points, and uh, the Bank of Canada did the same as well. So the major economic players in the world are uh, trying their best to kind of um, crush inflation. We'll see what happens. Uh, Bill Ackman of Pershing Capital said he was actually happy with the Fed under control. He actually has a 4% target rate um, for Fed fund rates, which is certainly a little high. Um, that's what his analysis are looking at. But there is kind of a positive with that when he says that once inflation gets crushed in this way, that he sees a huge upside for equities. So, you know, come December, seeing what happens and if these uh, if this interest rate increase uh, actually does crush inflation, we might have a good start to 2023. We'll see about that. Um, to this day, I think we have an increase of 2.5 percent uh, total of increase. So um, in that same realm, we have mortgage applications down uh, last month, hitting a 22-year low. This is massive. Um, I know Toronto and Canada as a whole was also having issues with it. So we're going to see a slowing in the real estate sector. What that means on the long term is kind of yet to be seen. Um, but I do expect that uh, we're going to probably continue to see interest rates go up. This, again, will bring down pressure in the market. This is going to affect other things uh, as the dollar goes up, uh, affect other kind of stores of value, such as gold. We actually haven't seen gold get hit extraordinarily hard, especially seeing the dollar go up to 110. Um, it, it's been holding above the 1700 level. Your other cryptos are going to obviously get smashed uh, with this. Gold seems to have a far better time holding its position in the, uh, the wake of a rising dollar. 
Um, what do we want to talk about today? Well, I think what's interesting for all of us to note is uh, the climate clean energy bill that's going through that Congress has passed. I think additionally, in that same vein, we can talk about um, the, the CHIP Act. So the New York Times came out with an article. Let's see if I can get this pulled up for you. Uh, let's see. So this is the clean energy project surge after the climate bill passage. What essentially is going to happen here? Obviously, the Biden administration is putting forth a lot of money to kind of rejuvenate the American economy. I, I could actually see, you know, it, when you look at like what happened in the Great Depression, right? Like, what do we? How do we get out of it? So um, obviously, industrialization helped massive. This these big kind of spending expenditure, expenditures help this get out. So. Um, there's a surge in announcements for opening up new plants. We have Toyota, who's trying to open up $2.5 billion uh, in battery factories. Honda, $4.4 billion somewhere um, in the states that's yet to be um, determined. Piedmont Lithium um, is looking to process lithium in Tennessee. This is going to help us get off of the Chinese supply, which will be massive and really make us a big player. Last time I was on, I spoke about Saudi Arabia being huge in lithium. That's still going to be the case, and I wonder what kind of um, uh, what kind of uh, alliance we'll have with that, right? So a lot of the oil prices, uh, you know, historically, or at least in I'd say probably the past seven years um, before COVID, has been a lot of America and Saudi Arabia operating together to keep oil at a certain price per barrel. Now, of course, that had to do a lot with uh, competing against Russia and kind of pricing them out. But it'll be interesting to see if Saudi Arabia and uh, America can strike an alliance on that. Um, this says, in the weeks since President Biden signed a comprehensive climate bill devised to spur investment in electric cars and clean energy, corporations have announced a series of big ticket projects to produce the kind of technology the legislation aims to promote. As I said, Toyota will invest an additional two point five billion in a factory in North Carolina to produce batteries for electric cars and hybrids. Honda and LG Energy Solution announced a joint venture to build a 4.4 billion battery factory at a location to be named. We have massive dependence on Chinese refineries. What what we're seeing, I think, in this evolving landscape, um, globally speaking, is we have some, as a nation, have some insecurities regarding our supply chains, right? We saw in COVID, it was something like 92% of the pharmaceuticals we have are offshore. Um, and so the lithium that we use is uh, offshore as well. Even chips, which we'll get to later, two thirds of those are produced by Taiwan. As the uh, the globe kind of shakes up a little bit and we have some schisms going on, obviously with Russia, and the, uh, the Global East in general, um, this is going to be a, a big move that not only rejuvenates, or, or rather makes a secure place for America, but it can also rejuvenate the economy. Um, First Solar is going to get in on this. We'll, we can talk about that when we get back. They want to invest up to $1.2 to build its fourth factory in the United States. So when we get back, we can speak about solar a little bit more and how this announcement with the Renewable Energy Act has actually done quite a bit of good things regarding some of the solar ETFs. Uh, again, the number is 877-927-6648. Send me an email if you want me to take a look at anything. Uh, that's jacob at tfnn.com, and uh, we'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFN Ed over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Seven, Welcome back, everyone. So before we went to break, we were talking about First Solar. Um, First Solar said it would like to invest up to $1.2 billion to build its fourth factory in the United States, probably somewhere in the southeast. Um, they're, essentially what's happening in this bill is they're making these large economic corridors um, that are making uh, some states uh, far more palatable uh, uh, to build factories in. This could actually be really huge for the South. Um, obviously a lot of economic dead zones in that area. Uh, and this is really, this isn't just like a supplementary um, like a supplementary sector. Uh, uh, this is going to be huge. I mean, you look at states like California who want to ban, you know, gas vehicles. And, and of course, you can, you know, have whatever opinion you want on the validity of that. However, there is an effort to do so. Uh, by 2035, we could see a lot of other states follow. And these areas that start early in producing kind of these more uh, renewable technologies could really take off. So if we look over here at the chart, we have first solar. You see this is up 5.27% today. Um, of all of this, and, and really the past month, it's been climbing steadily with some pretty decent volume as well. Um, so we look at the big kind of ETF they have for solar, which is TAN, it's a good joke. Uh, we had 6.11% uh, as we're moving. Again, big volume to the upside. A little bit of you know inside trading here, but um, not insider trading, just within the bounds. Um, what else do we have? We have Enphase Energy. Obviously a little bit lower volume, but we can see a general trend um, uh, of solar getting a lot of attention in this market. Um, you know, I think a lot still has to be uh, seen with how effective solar will be. However, I am of the opinion that uh, we can throw money just about anything and it will work. Um, and I think on the long term, at least a movement towards more sustainable energy um, is a good move. Um, of course, you know from the other time I filled in, I'm big on uranium. Um, however, I think that'll be part of the portfolio. What else? We also have solar edge technology. A lot of the same stuff. This, this popped up pretty impressively. Follows a little bit differently than the other charts. Um, we have a big red bar down here on high volume um, and kind of low volume all the way down. And we got to jump up on some higher volume than relatively, but not this big last down day. We'll see what happens with that. 
Um, let's see what else we have here today. So I think, in, I guess in the same vein, we can talk about the chips that's going on. Uh, again, as I said before the last break, uh, we have a major issue with producing. Uh, chips run everything. Um, a lot of the times, especially recently in the past few years, with how expensive the supply chains um, have gotten, um, we've been using uh, older generation chips. Uh, this has been a major issue. What America has done for a while is produce the most cutting edge uh, ideas and concepts, and then obviously we outsource them out. That worked out for a while. Um, obviously, you have discrepancies in, uh, in, in prices, which makes it cheaper in the domestic market. Uh, you have things like comparative advantage. Um, but since we're seeing this kind of aggression um, from China and, and a lot of um, pretty like I said, pretty, pretty aggressive comments regarding Taiwan. Um, I think it is in our best interest that we move away from this. Um, two thirds of all semiconductors and chips are developed in Taiwan. Now again, we develop uh, all the designs for it, um, but then we outsource it. Of course, if something bad happens with China uh, regarding Taiwan, we're not in a great position. They're the second largest economy in the world. They have a, an immense military. Um, so it's going to be a little difficult, <laughs> you know, for us if they invade. This will be good. So let's see what's going on with that. So the, the chip, we're going to have $50 billion injected into it. Um, we'll see. Again, I was reading that this is going to be something within, like, the, uh, you know, the continental south. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Um, but again, this will be a nice injection into the economy, okay? These are real tangible things that are being developed. Um, and uh, I think it'll be decent for us. This could get us out of a relatively inflationary uh, situation and actually get us out positively on the other side. If we look at some of the chip stocks we have, um, this is the Van Eck ETF semiconductor. Um, we're up 2.10%. There's not a lot of action, I would say, currently in this sector. Um, even our leveraged ETS from our friends over at Direction, um, you know, obviously the short's down 6.5%, and uh, uh, you're, 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 you're uh, bullish, excuse me, it's up 6.52%. Not, you know, imp impressive uh, rise, but not a ton of activity in this market. Relatively low volume and these bigger ones here. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see if America can come back and actually be a global producer um, and uh, industry power in the 21st century. Um, I think that there's plenty of people willing to take jobs. Of course, I think things will become more expensive because we're producing them here. Um, but there is that security. Um, shipping, obviously, internationally has become quite a lag um, and has increased prices. So, you know, whether production in America uh, leading to cheaper um, delivery is negligible or not, what we'll see. Um, but this could be huge. This could be really big for America. Um, we can switch back a little bit to um, renewable energies. Something again from the New York Times I was reading, um, you know, Russia is really leveraging um, their natural, excuse me, their oil production um, in this kind of conflict with the Ukraine. Um, Everyone's talking about uh, gas prices going up, uh, heating prices going up for the Europeans. Now, while that's true, um, the Europeans have historically paid extraordinarily low um, for heating. Again, this doesn't mean that this is necessarily good, but is it the end of the world? I mean, they'll probably pay something similar to people in America now for it. Obviously, that's a big impact on the economy. Um, but we can look at actually something that I found interesting. It's a country you don't hear a lot about in Europe, kind of gets overlooked, uh, but it's Portugal. Um, Portugal is what they refer to as an energy island. They are not reliant on gas fields, oil wells, coal mines. In fact, they don't have any. Now, they're actually pretty big on hydropower. Um, and with a global drought that we've experienced, you know, we've had wildfires all over, especially in France and in the UK. Um, Portugal's hydropower production has been uh, crippled. However, um, they, along with Spain, invested very heavily in renewable energy uh, like wind, solar, and hydropower um, and have established an elaborate system, quote, an elaborate system for importing gas from North, West Africa, United States, and elsewhere. For Europe to truly be able to live out their own kind of plan that they have, they, they need to, th This has been 
almost a lesson of this this whole show so far is that these global supply chains have in a way kind of become compromised because not everyone is on the same plan essentially so it's really in the best interest of the european union who's who's been you know hit really hard since 2020 to kind of get away with this i think they can um it looks like uh, it says the changed circumstances here are shifting the power balances among the 27 members of the European Union, creating opportunities as well as political tension as the bloc seeks to counter Russia's energy leverage. Uh, there's also something where Russia was going to stop importing into, Ru into Europe. Now, of course, that's true, but what's really going to happen is we'll enter through another avenue, such as Turkey, and the Europeans will continue to hurt more. Uh, we can look a little bit more into this as we get back and see other examples of where this works properly um, and places that have attempted to do it and for whatever reason have stopped. Uh, we'll be right back again. The number is 877-927-6648. Uh, we'll be right back, folks. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Um, so a few people in the den actually asked for me to kind of provide some background on my, some information on my background, trading ideology tools and methods. So yeah, um, uh, I graduated from the University of South Florida with a bachelor's degree in finance and um, business administration. I was involved in uh, one of the honor groups there. I was involved in the investments club. Uh, so I've always had a really big interest um, in kind of the market itself. Of course, I'm in more of a, um, I suppose, management position now, um, but that, that passion hasn't died. Um, regarding my ideology regarding trading, um, I'm I'm really big into figuring out what, I, for well for one traditionally speaking uh, fundamentals have been everything for me. In fact, um, 
TFNN has really opened my eyes to technical trading, um, which we did a little bit of um, regarding like some options courses that we had, um, but, but never obviously to the extent at, at which I'm exposed to it here. It's very cool to see these technicians that we have uh, doing their thing. Um, I, I'm really interested in seeing what the economy of the future is going to be like right now. Now there's always naturally shifts um, every few decades, right? New things occur. Um, but I see now that there's really concerted effort to uh, really change the, the, the economic makeup of uh, the world we live in. Um, I mean, this is stuff with in increased digitalization. This is stuff with um, renewable energy. And again, we're seeing massive pushes by governing bodies to get to this. So ideology wise, I, I love looking for things that are like higher growth. Of course, that's cut a little bit um, with some more value stocks, but everything I look into um, is, is generally growth. Um, and the fundamentals are absolutely everything for me. Um, especially uh, looking at wh what the hype is around the stock. Now, of course, that doesn't necessarily correlate with fundamentals, but um, a lot of times it can play into it. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I've been working here for probably just a little bit over a year now. And I've really been enjoying it. So, um, but yeah, so I hope that answered your question, everyone in the den. Um, and if you're not in the Discord, I, I got to tell you, you got to get in. It's, it's awesome. I mean, we got, we got hundreds of people in there all day. These guys know what they're talking about. Um, and, you know, throughout my years, I've been in other kind of trading rooms or on different forums or whatever. Um, and, you know, nothing quite compares to this. And I get that that's a bit of a biased opinion, um, but, you know, you got to check it out for yourself. All right, so let's look today. Um, Apple is releasing the, or rather has released, the iPhone 14. However, apparently this is not doing too much for it right now. Um, we are up just a little bit, um, but it kind of it kind of begs the question, right? Like it, traditionally speaking, especially when the 13 came out, um, you had huge increases. Now, especially with the 12, you had some big iOS changes, and this drives um, interest. Uh, this article on Investors.com is saying this is the worst reception in iPhones since the iPhone 6s. <laughs> It says the market receptions of Apple's new iPhone 14 due today is already lukewarm. Wall Street seems bored of the iterative changes. Apple stock is down 6.3% in the month leading into September 7th announcements, says Investor Business Daily analysis of data from S&P Global Market Intelligence. So, yeah, obviously Apple's been getting slammed. The S&P 500 has been getting slammed in general. Um, let's see where we're at. Not that big of a difference off. I mean, no, that's, no, no, that's, you know, so we have Apple up 1.15 and we have the SPX up 1.94. I mean, Apple dominates regarding its portion of the market itself. Um, but again, I, I think it's really important to note that Apple is not going anywhere. Yes, the small changes that aren't really groundbreaking um, can be a little bit aggravating, um, but you're always going to have lull years with this kind of idea. Um, people are still going to buy these new iPhones. Maybe disposable income isn't as high right now, but um, plenty of these units are being sold. Um, and another thing that's important is you're looking at the upcoming generation, you know, Gen Z and whatever they have below them. Two thirds of them own Apple. And we see when we have Gen Z getting into, I mean, the oldest of Gen Z are 25 now, right? They're still sticking with Apple. Their brand loyalty is immense. And you have issues with companies like Google getting these kids off of it. You know, it's just what we've known. We all had iPhones when we were younger, and we don't really want to change. And, you know, iPhone's iMessaging system is actually massive. It was revolutionary when it came out. It was the first one to have read receipts. It was the first one to really alternate the colors um, of the text. And Google has still not, or really any kind of other provider, has not been able to uh, really match that. So, yeah, I mean, things have been lagged. Everything in the market's been lagged. Obviously, Apple should probably be doing maybe a bit better since they just released a new product. Um, but, you know, I, I see, you know, their next release or whatever else they do, they're going to be fine. And uh, if the market's in a better place, we'll see a, a bigger upswing. I mean, you look at the way that they've... They've made everything a product, right? Like, uh, even their chargers now don't come with the charger box. You have to do, it's, it's insane. 
you have to spend so much money to get the iPhone, yet people are still doing it. You get these new i, um, the uh, the uh, ear pods they have. It's like two hundred dollars a pop. Uh, they're insane. You buy a charger for that. These guys really have their their cash flow on a, on a positive level here. Um, this portion of the article is uh, looking for the iPhone's future. It says even though a new product may be exciting to consumers and anyone part of the Apple fandom, investors have tended to turn a cold shoulder to these events. On average, across the 18 days in which a new iteration of smartphone was announced, Apple stock has only risen 22% of the time, with an average decline of 0.32%. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in fact, Apple has not reacted positively to an iPhone announcement since 2019. Again. Maybe so. I would argue it's not that drastic. The iPhone 13 was a really impressive release, and everyone purchased one. Let's see here. What do we got? I think if we can jump back over to Portugal, these guys are essentially going to be the funnel um, for Western Europe uh, and energy. They have a really nice strategy um, for getting liquid, liquefied natural gas into it. We could actually see these guys being a big middleman um, into Europe. And honestly, with the production of more of these batteries coming out of, you know, in the next decade, coming out of Saudi Arabia, coming out of America, um, these guys could actually get themselves out of the economic situation they've been in since 2008, uh, which is really interesting. One of the um, complementary um, sectors with lithium and batteries is going to be copper, okay? So let's take a look. We can look at Southern Copper here, if I can pull it up. Southern Copper is pretty sweet. Um, obviously, it's been, every material has, has mainly been hit. These guys have a 6% dividend, which is really solid. Um, we see some nice volume on an update here. Obviously, we have some declining. Um, this, again, gets hit by, when you have concepts of recession, increasing interest rates, all these kind of raw materials tend to get hit. Uh, to a certain point. Um, let's see what else. We have CX here. Obviously, he was doing some analysis on that. Same kind of idea. We have, well, we had a low volume, we had high, higher volume reasonably for that month on the update and kind of a general decline. I do think on the long term, the Freeport mines a bunch of other things besides copper, um, but they do have a big portion of copper. Um, the copper contract has stayed relatively steady, um, right under $4. Um, I do think if you want to get in to the kind of renewable energy section, you, you got to look at these guys. I, I think I think copper is going to be huge. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. When we come back, we can talk a little bit more about um, transferring energy from these kind of new plants and uh, just see what else. If you have any questions, please give me a call, 877-927-6648. Message me in the den, message me on YouTube, and I'll get to you. All right, we'll be right back, folks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, 
Trade LABU or LABD. Directions Daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Um, let's take a look right now at one of my favorite sectors is steel. Steel has been doing phenomenally, and everyone at the office, because you talk about it all the time, and I'm sure they're sick of it, um, but let's look at these two in particular that I love playing with, which is Steel Dynamics and uh, Nucor. And we take a look at Nucor in a second. Steel Dynamics has uh, this is actually founded by three uh, executives from from Nucor. <coughs> Excuse me. They're based in Indiana. Um, let's see what we got here. Give me one moment. So their fundamentals are, are really solid for Q2 in 2022. They're up six and, and really like. You know, look at this in in comparison to the rest of the market. We have um, the revenue um, at 6.21 billion, which is up almost 40 percent year over year. We have net income at 1.21 billion, which is 72 percent up over the year. And diluted earnings per share is at 6.73, uh, which is up 94 percent. They're really they're really a, a solid company. I mean, EPS um, actual they had an estimate for Q2 of 2022 at six dollars and five cents, and it actually returned six seventy three. Um, let's see what else we can get for their fundamentals here. Anything interesting? Let's see here. Nice profit margin of twenty percent, almost operating margin of twenty six. These guys are good. Um, they've actually held relatively well, comparatively speaking, over, let's see here. Where can I, over the week? So, you know, we get a few, especially regarding like, the, <laughs> yeah, the rest of the market taking it nosedive, but these guys have held at 79.64. Um, it loves playing up to about the 85 area. It, it's, it's, it, it really retraces and then builds up big again. Let's see. It, Nucor is kind of like its bigger cousin. Let's see here. One moment. We have added up only a modest 6.63%. Uh, Let's get a better look here. We just do it one year. So yeah, I, I, I like these stocks. I think, I think long term, you're not going to lose too much of your value whatsoever in these. You know, of course, this is totally just my opinion on it. But I love playing with these stocks. Um, again, I think in October of last year, um, Biden was doing something to um, renew a lot of the, the piping uh, in the Great Lakes region, a lot of the infrastructure. We, we are due for a massive infrastructure overhaul in America. That could be part of the plan to kind of stimulate growth in the economy after it gets uh, lulled by the interest rates increase. I could totally see that. Um, again, that's helped us historically in the past. So interesting to see what happens with that. Let's see what else we got here today. Bum, bum, bum. We can take a look at Tesla quickly. Give Tesla up 3.1%. Again, I think this news with uh, there's not a lot of good competitors. I think in the American market um, for you know, Elon Musk is a, is a great marketer regarding all of this. Um, 
I mean, it's, it's absurd what people have seen Tesla do under his uh, ownership. I mean, he's the one who opened it anyway. But um, if people follow under California's uh, kind of, uh, they follow behind their example, these guys are going to be here to stay. I don't think anything's cutting these guys out whatsoever. Um, and there's just nothing else that's really, we had, what is it? Uh, oh man, Nikola, <laughs> that company, that turned out to be an entire, just kind of just bust essentially, right? The guy was promising things that, that weren't even there. Um, and I think the more we get lithium building in America, it'll be uh, massive. Someone in the YouTube brought up, who was it? I think EKS says, uh, says regarding the uh, the lithium Piedmont in Tennessee, this may be one to investigate further. The tax legislation says minerals for batteries may, must be domiciled from U.S. to get those credits. Let's see right here. So we have this here. This is from the Tennessee government website. Um, Let's see what they have to say regarding this. Is as a producer of lithium hydroxide, a critical component in the supply chain for both electric vehicle and battery storage markets, Piedmont's Tennessee Lithium Project will support energy security in the U.S. and the transition to a clean energy economy in North America. The new manufacturing plant will utilize more environmentally responsible and economic processing tools, excuse me, technology, supporting Piedmont's objective of becoming a large, low-cost, sustainable producer of lithium products. This could be huge for Tennessee. I mean, seriously, um, the idea of lithium becoming massive has has been around forever. I remember when they thought that Peru was going to be the next uh, Dubai because of their their lithium production. Of course, instability kind of screwed them on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it seems as I was saying before, it really seems like all governments, um, whether it's your state, local, or international, are, are going for this kind of stuff. I, I mean, I think it's I think it's really sweet. Um, Tennessee's in like the Southern Automotive Corridor, it says, continues to track companies in the electric vehicle industry. We believe in McKinnon County, and et cetera, et cetera. This would be huge for Piedmont. Uh, let's see what else we got. Du, 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 du. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know in the den. I don't mind at all looking some stuff up for you, um, even if my analysis is not as uh, experienced as Tom's. I, would, I wouldn't mind taking a look for you. Let's see here. I guess we can go back here to seeing, essentially, we'll, we'll get something good for you too after the break. Um, seeing how Europe can get out of this. I, uh, I really do think while liquefied natural gas is gonna be, is gonna be big for, you know, Western Europe coming in from Central and, uh, and Portugal, I really think we need to take a major look at the future of, of nuclear. We have so much potential in this. Um, from everything from thorium salts now to being able to utilize um, the, um, you know, the waste essentially um, from nuclear to create more. I think this is really big. The major issue, again, as I said, the last time it was on here is kind of the public perception of it, right? And I mean, these are valid. Yeah, Three Mile Island, you had Fukushima, all these kind of things. The apparatus, um, the nuclear apparatus itself has become so much more efficient. Um, our, the way that we get rid of it, I mean, you take a small bit in the desert and you just dig it there. This, I think, now, of course, again, solar, wind, all these things are going to be necessary. Um, everything still has its impact on the environment. I'm, I'm sure we'll see in two decades all these, all these big hit pieces on, on solar as well, um, but uh, just like it is on nuclear now, um, but, but these are huge. This is the way that every country can be energy independent. I think this is really massive. I think that there will be a lag um, <clears throat> in getting some of what, you know, the renewable energy such as wind and solar in, and I think this conversation, I, I really uh, wanna say that you should be open to looking at some of these stocks. Um, let's see here. Germany was going to open a bunch of them. They, they've historically had an issue with energy, right? Um, even in the world wars, one of their biggest failings was that they didn't have enough energy. Their scientists in World War II were working for nuclear. It's strange to me that they closed this down. I think this is all political, but obviously there's gonna be a massive necessity 
um, that I think is, is going to shift the public perception. When we come back, I'll look up some, uh, some of the good stocks that I've played with regarding nuclear. We can take a deeper look. Um, again, we have a little bit left. Give me a call, 877-927-6648, and we'll be right back. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Right now, we're taking a look at Lightbridge Corporation, uh, per the den here. So these guys essentially have removed, this is a, this is a, this is a nuclear stock. Uh, these guys have removed um, some grids in the uh, the flow restricting spacer grids, um, which just controls the flow of some of the water into the nuclear reactor. Apparently, this allows um, more water to move through the core without increasing pump power, and this is <laughs> allows it to operate at a thousand degrees cooler, which is obviously huge. And this is kind of like the point I'm getting at, right? Like now to to get better technology in uranium, um, or really nuclear in general, it's a huge amount of upfront investment uh, to develop some of, the new, uh, some of these new things. But, but once it's there, I mean, it, it really can revolutionize. It's a little bit interesting to see this, this stock move. I mean, this popped up in 1219. This must have been uh, when all those uranium stocks were pumping up. I know uh, energy fuels popped up pretty heavily as well. And this has a lot of action here. Yeah, just about. These guys are based in Colorado. These guys are uranium as well. It's a really cool um, deal here. Um, additionally, 
this article says uranium industry bullish on Canada with roughly 30% of uranium total global output. Um, so it might be interesting to see if you're interested to get some more exposure. I mean, in all of these natural materials kind of come out of, I mean, the gold is huge out there, silver, a lot of your, your big um, precious metal and metal companies in general come out of Canada. Um, they have some suggestions here for um, active companies in the market. You have Basin Uranium Corporation. Um, these, these are all on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Let's see what else. I mean, we have Cameco, obviously. Let's see. Da -da. What's Cameco doing today? That's some nice movement today. Doing a little bit better than the market, too. Interesting. Again, I, I, with what I'm saying, like, getting your portfolio ready for the future, it's, it's really thinking about, like, this, this sci-fi stuff. How is it going to change in the 80s? Like, really pay attention to that, because it seems that that's kind of what we're moving to. Um, so, well, folks, listen, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, I think Tom will be back tomorrow. Um, but uh, thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great day and stay safe. We'll see you soon.